So the research shows that there have been five randomized controlled trials of methotrexate for PMR, and the results have been mixed. So let's see what we learn from these studies. First was the Ferraccioli study, and they found that patients taking methotrexate needed less prednisone overall compared to those who didn't with 1.84 grams for methotrexate versus 3.2 grams for the prednisone placebo group. The second was the Caparoli study. This study showed more people in the methotrexate group were able to stop prednisone completely at 87.5%, compared to the placebo group at 53%. Those on methotrexate used less total amount of prednisone during the study. Next is the Nazarenia study. Similar to other studies, this one found that methotrexate helped lower the total amount of prednisone patients needed over 44 weeks. They did a follow-up study of the Caparoli study, and over six years, they basically found that it had no net benefit, that people were experiencing the same amount of prednisone side effects, and while they might have little less inflammation overall on their ESR blood tests, it didn't really translate into less complications from taking prednisone, less prednisone use really. So while methotrexate may have potential as a steroid sparing agent, the evidence remains uncertain because of the limitations of the studies. They were small studies, maybe they were selecting for healthier people, or maybe some of the people in the studies they were actually treating had rheumatoid arthritis instead of PMR. So let's answer some of your questions about methotrexate and PMR. How effective is methotrexate for getting off prednisone? Like I just went through, the evidence shows that for some people it might be effective, but for many others, it may not really make much of a difference. At the Harvard Medical School seminar, this is what the professor said. He said, regarding methotrexate, one study 20 years ago, I think he meant Caparoli, showed methotrexate was quite successful. A newer study in 2022 showed that it was no better than placebo. That's what they said there. So according to that guy, he's no longer prescribing methotrexate for people with PMR when there are so many different other options we can choose from now. Next question, how should I taper methotrexate after stopping prednisone? Methotrexate tapering should only be done under the supervision of a doctor. They'll assess your inflammation levels in your blood, your relapse risk, and your overall health before adjusting the dose. They'll probably taper you gradually to avoid flares, but it's definitely not something that you should do on your own. So back to the question about, I'm hesitant to take methotrexate because of the terrible side effects. So what should you know about methotrexate? And another medical school professor at the seminar shared this. He said, I think the big hesitation with methotrexate comes in the fact that first, it was originally designed as a chemotherapy medication. And second, it has the letter X in it, methotrexate. And our human psyche associates an X with toxic or skull and crossbones or other poisonous things. And so you just immediately associate it with poison. And so let's find out how bad it really is methotrexate. It does have side effects, and these are the ones you may experience. Nausea and fatigue are by far the most common. Stomach upset, just feeling a little bit yucky is common, especially at the beginning, and it tends to get better over time. The first month might be a little rough, but then after that, it usually tends to get better. Mouth sores are common, and then rare liver toxicity and blood changes showing up on blood tests may appear, like low blood cell counts. Those are rare side effects, but your doctor, if they're gonna prescribe it, will be testing for that. And they're usually reversible after you stop taking methotrexate. So from your doctor's perspective, it's not much of a concern. For other diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, the doctors who prescribe for people with rheumatoid arthritis consider methotrexate to be a much better option than prednisone as far as safety. They specifically think that methotrexate causes less side effects than prednisone. So if you're terrified of methotrexate side effects, your concerns are a little misplaced. You should be more terrified of prednisone side effects. My platform here is that I want you to do everything you possibly can to minimize your side effects from prednisone. 
And one of those things is to get on the lowest effective dose of prednisone. I want you to be able to thrive on prednisone and not just survive on prednisone. And so helping you understand that the risks of prednisone are actually worse than the risks of methotrexate statistically and according to the doctors who are actually prescribing these drugs. Methotrexate looks scary. I get it, but it it's less scary than prednisone. Prednisone is truly a more scary drug. And as another professor at that event said that prednisone and other glucocorticoids are the most harmful medications they prescribe in rheumatology. That makes it more harmful than methotrexate, right? In addition, they're also the best drugs they prescribe in rheumatology because it works so well to help the pain go away, just not necessarily keep it away, right? We've talked about the relapse risk. So for prednisone and methotrexate, the really most important thing is to keep the benefits and risks balance in your favor. You wanna make sure it's actually working for you and that the side effects are less than the alternative of not being on the medication and having your disease untreated. So here's some practical advice if you are taking methotrexate. Typically methotrexate is dosed once a week. Often people end up using it on like a Friday, for example, every Friday, they'll take their methotrexate dose. So you wanna first schedule it, like put a reminder on your phone to take methotrexate or put it in your pill box every Friday, whatever it is, make sure you're not missing the dose. You want it to be consistent. Next, methotrexate is well known to cause some of the side effects because it's depleting folic acid from your body. Folate or folinic acid or methyl tetrahydrofolate these are ways to describe supplements that you can take to give back what methotrexate is stealing from your body, leading to side effects like the mouth sores. And so if you're taking methotrexate for PMR, you also need to be taking some form of folate. My favorite is l 5 methyltetrahydrofolate, but there's also prescription folinic acid that your doctor can give you. Next, stay hydrated, especially that day that you're taking methotrexate. That can help your body process it effectively and may minimize the nausea. Definitely keep monitoring your health. Your doctor is going to be ordering blood tests to make sure that nothing really bad happens from the methotrexate. So be sure to do those follow-up blood tests to make sure it's safe for you. Next, watch for side effects. Common side effects like fatigue or stomach upset are usually annoying, but not life-threatening. But if anything is concerning to you, be in touch with your doctor. Finally, combine it with lifestyle changes like eating an anti-inflammatory diet, getting good exercise, and minimizing stress. That can help to manage your PMR symptoms. So to summarize, methotrexate may or may not be a helpful alternative to prednisone or a way to minimize prednisone dose. It's just really controversial. And in Harvard, they don't do it anymore. But if you're wondering, well, I hate prednisone. Is there anything else I can use for my PMR? I learned a whole bunch of what other things you can consider for PMR and at that Harvard seminar. So check out this video, other treatment options besides prednisone for PMR that I learned all about at Harvard Medical School. Just watch that video now. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.